Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today we look at the continuation of the story of Daniel. However, this time we find that a new king arose in Babylon and his name was King Darius. Now King Darius had a very special place in his heart for Daniel. The Bible actually tells us that Daniel had a distinguished position in Darius's heart. Now the interesting thing here is that we find that because Daniel had this very special place in the king's heart that the king wanted to exalt Daniel to become a very powerful man in the kingdom in charge of the whole realm. So this would mean that Daniel would become basically almost second in charge after the king. Now you can imagine that there were some other governors and some other leaders in the kingdom that was not happy with us. Now what happened was that all of these people that came together, all the governors, all the leaders, started to think of a plan on how they could cause Daniel to fall. So they looked closely at what Daniel does. They looked at the way he talked to other people, the things he did, and they wanted to find one thing that they could pinpoint and say, ah, Daniel does this wrong. But you know what? They could not find a single thing in the life of Daniel. So when Daniel was not present in the king's court that day, the leaders found a very unique idea on what they could pinpoint on Daniel for what he did. And the only thing they could manage to find was that Daniel was an extremely devoted man to God. Now there's nothing wrong in that. In actual fact, it's a good thing that Daniel was a devoted man. But they wanted to twist it around and cause it to become something where they could find fault in Daniel. So you know what they did? They approached King Darius and they said, Oh, mighty king, we would like to celebrate your power. We would like to have the people of Medo-Persia celebrate you as the all-powerful, the wisest king. And naturally, the king liked the idea. Because which king would not want his subjects to think he's the best king? But the thing that they did, which was not okay, was that they actually encouraged the king to make a law by which for 30 days no one was to be worshipped except for King Darius. Now, obviously they served pagan gods and for them it was no big deal, but Daniel served the living God. So for Daniel this was a very big thing because for Daniel he wanted to pray to God three times a day and Daniel wanted to celebrate God on the Sabbath day and what we see is that these people actually got it right to have the king sign a decree stating that there should be no one worshipped except the king for 30 days in the kingdom of Medo-Persia. Now the king didn't see anything wrong with this at this point in time. But as the story continues, you will start to see that the king recognized his mistake sooner rather than later. And let us take a moment and flash to what Daniel did when he heard about this new law that he may not pray to anybody or worship anybody except King Darius. Now, what do you think Daniel did when he found out about this new law that he was only allowed to worship the king and that was for 30 days? You see, when Daniel read about this new law, Daniel didn't fear, Daniel didn't change what he did. Daniel actually continued with life as it normally went on. 
So Daniel didn't change any of his habits. As a matter of fact, Daniel continued exactly as if things were the way they usually were. So Daniel continued to pray three times a day in front of his window, not closing the shutters, not drawing the curtains. He continued to pray to God for 30 days, regardless of what the consequences might have been. Now, the amazing thing is that we find these counselors and these governors had to trap Daniel. So they were sort of spying on Daniel. They were sort of looked through the window and they were, oh, look, he's praying. We got him. He done it. He's doing it wrong. And exactly that is what we find took place. But Daniel was not afraid. Now, when the king heard that Daniel had been caught in the act of praying to his God and not to the king, the king was very upset with himself because he realized at this point that this was all a trick to try and trap Daniel. Now, obviously, because the king loved Daniel and the king had a, had a special place in his heart for Daniel, the king really, really felt sad. Now the king actually said to Daniel before they threw Daniel in the lion's den, your God whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Now those are beautiful words and we find that Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, which must have been pretty scary for Daniel. But you know what Daniel did? What do you think Daniel did? Before I maybe tell you, I believe Daniel was faithful and once again, Daniel prayed. Why do you think Daniel prayed? Because he realized that God is the only one that can help him. But also, it was Daniel's habit to pray in times of stress and in times of disaster. And we find that what God did was God actually sent an angel to shut the lion's mouths. And this was beautiful because God showed Daniel that God is faithful even though things might seem very bad or the situation might even seem like it's lost. Now what we find is an amazing testimony that what took place the next day after the king couldn't close an eye to sleep and after the king prayed and fasted that night for Daniel we find that the king rushed to the lion's den and he looked to see if Daniel was still alive. And very much so, Daniel was alive. And it's beautiful because Daniel's reaction was obviously to praise God for saving him. And the king also had a very similar reaction where the king wrote a hymn of praise, actually. And you can go and read about this in Daniel chapter 6, verse 25 to 27, where King Darius said, There is no God but Daniel's God. Daniel's God is faithful. And it's beautiful to see a king who did not believe in God suddenly come into a belief in the God that we serve today still. And King Darius even made a decree saying that because Daniel's God is the only God that lives, we should worship him. And what we find here is the truth of the matter that when we face people trying to mock or, or joke about our faith, do we feel discouraged? Do we feel sad? Do we feel ashamed of who we worship? Or are we like Daniel going to stay firm in what we, we, we believe? And are we like Daniel going to continue to pray even though other people might think it doesn't work? Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, that we can always come to you in prayer. Thank you that you are always faithful in protecting us and caring for us and loving us. And Jesus, we pray that as we continue in this new week that lies ahead, that we would continue to put our faith in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day further. And remember to pray even though you might think the situation looks very bad.